Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock and it's time for a review show revisited. Now this is where we take tricks that we've reviewed over the previous weeks, months and years and we go and perform them in the real world and we go and figure out whether they're any good or not because sometimes we can give something a good review and it turns out not to be very good. Sometimes we can give something a bad review and it can turn out to be awesome. And so these review show revisiteds are great. For the best will in the world, it's impossible to do live performance every single week. We review five or six items every single week. It would be impossible to find the time to go out and do live performances. But what we'll do is we'll take tricks and we'll do live performances. We'll film it and then we'll do these review show revisited. And today is a Ryland Petty special because Ryland's doing all of the live performances on this review show special. Let's be honest, if you, why have a dog and bark yourself, right? So Ryland's going out and he's doing all the live performances. We're looking at three tricks that we've reviewed over the previous few months and years and um, they're all stage performances that take place at the House of Secrets. So you're going to see a full performance, we're going to talk about the original review and what we think of it now that we've performed it in the real world. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. We're going to start this, this, this week's review show revisited with this. So the first trick we're going to be looking at is Socks Appeal by Bill Abbott. Now, Socks Appeal came out probably about a year and a half to two years ago, and it's available uh, through Murphy's. I believe it went through Murphy's and therefore through all good magic dealers, but it's also available directly through Bill Abbott. Now, whenever I bring up Socks Appeal, a lot of people get confused between this and Socks that was performed and created by Michelle Huyt and uh, Vanishing Ink, and they think that Socks and Socks Appeal are the same thing. It's completely different. Socks is um, a prediction of, uh, you know, a chosen sock. It, it, it's a totally different thing. Socks appeal is a really interesting type of concept. I think less people are aware of socks appeal than they are socks. It's a very interesting concept and it's a great routine to come out and start your performance with. So what it is, basically, is you come out on stage and you're kind of draped with socks. You've got socks covered over your arms your arms have got socks all all over it and you have somebody come up on stage they pick whichever socks that they want they have a completely free choice and uh you end up having the sock match the um the sock the sock basically the sock matches so that, that's what happens at the end the sock um the sock matches the prediction right so that's what that's what socks appeal is uh and it's great i'm not going to say any more about it let's have a look at live performance this is ryland performing this live at the house of secrets uh this is really a stage piece which is why it's suited so well uh to a stage show let's have a look at ryland doing it and then we'll talk about what we think <laughs> Can you just uh, stand there? Yeah? Okay, so we've got socks on the left, and we've got socks on the right. Do you want your left or your right? Your left, so this. Uh, so that's the one you want to keep, so we'll get rid of these in. So this is what we've got. We've got four socks here. So we've eliminated four, now we've got uh, four socks. We've got odds and evens. Do you want the odds or do you want the evens? Do you want to get rid of the even or keep the even? Keep the even. So if one, that's odd, we'll get rid of that. Two, that's even. Three, that's odd. Four, that's even. Now we've got two socks left. Uh, choose either sock. That one. So we'll get rid of that one. So this is the one we've got. Now, you've eliminated seven socks. And we've left with one. So we started with eight socks. we now got one sock. Now, this is going to be cool. You ready? This sock matches perfectly to the bare ankle. But I'm only joking, it matches perfectly to the sock that I am wearing right... Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> Left on my shoulder, apparently. We've got that one there. Just like that. So that is Socks Appeal, and as you saw, it got a really great reaction. And I wasn't really surprised because it is a very strong commercial trick. However, there is something that came up that's worth noting um, that um, I wasn't aware of or I never thought of when I was talking about the review, which is this really has to be an opening routine in order for the setup, in order to, to be set up, because you have to come out on stage with the socks over your arms, right? 
Um, and so you can't really do that in the middle of a performance. You can't go, one minute, I'm going to do another trick now. So you have to kind of use it as an opening routine, which isn't too much of a problem because it makes a really nice opening routine. It's over very, very quickly. It's got a funny moment in it. It gets the audience uh, interacting with what you're doing. It's very, very funny. It's a great trick. Um, but the other problem that came up as a result of it um, that I didn't really consider in the original review is realistically, you kind of need a backstage helper to get you prepped to do this because it's very difficult to set the socks up on your arms, on your own. It's very, very difficult. And Ryland couldn't do it. He was trying, he was trying, he couldn't do it. So he used this to open the second half of his show and I had to kind of go backstage and then he was standing backstage like a scarecrow with his arms out like this, waiting to come on stage. And that's something that you do need to consider because sometimes when you're, you, you might be thinking of performing this at a, at a stage show, for example, and you've got a very small backstage area or you have nowhere that you can actually go and get changed and you're just coming through the audience. Anything like that's important. If you haven't got someone who can help you drape the socks over just before you go on stage, because what you don't want to do is have them put the socks on you and then 15 minutes later you go on stage, your arms are going to be knackered. So it's it's a very important consideration that you need to think about, right? Um, outside of that, the actual trick is brilliant. Um, the way that the procedure is structured, without giving too much away, the way the procedure is structured is very, very clever. And it's a combination of physical and verbal misdirection and, and forcing techniques to allow you to get to the position that you need to get into. And that line where you go, hey, it matches my bare ankle is a really funny line. And then you show that your other, your other, uh, you know, your other shoe has got the, uh, has got the, uh, the actual sock on. Really, really strong moment in the routine. Really strong moment in the routine. Now, it's actually very easy to do, which is unusual. A lot of stage items, you do need to spend a lot of time practicing. You do need to spend a lot of time thinking about it. You do need to spend a lot of rehearsal time. This isn't really so much... Uh, this isn't that difficult, really. It's actually relatively easy to do. So you can do it very, very quickly um, without needing to worry too much about it. So if you're looking to add something into your show that's really quick and very direct and very visual from an, from an audience's point of view, then this is something that absolutely will fit the bill. Um, it's also nice. I very much appreciate the fact that everything comes in like a Ziploc bag. Having now, I haven't performed it, but having been to Ryland with a number of gigs where he's actually gone and done this, I find that that really helps as well. But yeah, it's, it's a strong trick. It's a really good trick. I think it is a an opener and I think there are limitations just in terms of the setup that you need to be aware of but it doesn't stop it from being a great trick it's just something that you need to be aware of that I didn't consider when we did the initial review so there you go it's called socks appeal you can get it directly from Bill Abbott or all good magic dealers um, that's the first trick we're going to be looking at in this week's review show revisited we gave it a good review before I stand by that review but just be aware of the limitations now we're going to move on to the second trick okay so the second trick we reviewed in the middle of the pandemic because I remember Ryland first doing this in a virtual show that, Ryan, that Slightly Unusual put on and it was in the middle of the pandemic. It was when we weren't allowed to leave the house. I'm talking about The Cube Wall by Bond Lee. Now, there's a reason I've actually done a review show revisited The Cube Wall. Even now, we get so many people asking us our opinion on The Cube Wall. Me and Ryland get a lot of messages about The Cube Wall. And I think one of the reasons is Ryland actually did it in the auditions of Britain's Got Talent. If you remember Ryland's Britain's Got Talent audition, he actually did The Cube Wall on Britain's Got Talent. And when Ryland did it, if you remember back, if anybody remembers how he did it on, uh, on, on Britain's Got Talent, he had like 16 kids with him. And these 16 kids were all shuffling a Rubik's Cube and he was getting the kids to, uh, he was tapping them on the shoulders and they were putting the cubes inside the cube wall. And it gave it a very, uh, it, it sped the routine up. Because the problem with the cube wall is it can be quite procedural. There's a lot of dead time if you're not careful. Because if you think about it, there's a couple of ways of doing it. If you don't know what the cube wall is, you'll see a performance in a minute. But basically it's a grid and you, there's 24 spaces that you can put a cube in. And there's two ways of doing it. The first way is you've got 24 cubes to one side and you're just putting them in one at a time, which kind of by cube number 15 or 16 is going to start getting a little bit dull. 
Or the cubes are already in there, but then you, you get them all to pick one cube that they're going to take out. So you get one from each row taken out, and then the audience mixes them up, and then they put them back in in different places, um, which is fine. But then it becomes not as impressive because not all of the cube were cubes were mixed at the beginning, and you can have all the cubes mixed at the beginning. So it's kind of how do you do it? And that's why we went for the way that we did with Britain's Got Talent, because having those 16 kids on stage with him meant that the whole routine was sped up. The trouble is you can't do that at a normal gig. You can't go to a gig and say, right, okay, so I'm going to do this gig. I need 16 kids to come along with me that are trained how to do this. It's just not going to happen. So because of that, you kind of think, well, how else can you do it, right? And different people have got different ideas. And, and, and you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to do the cue ball on the review show Revisited is to show exactly how Ryland's done it. And there's been a lot of trial and error with this, but a lot of people book Ryland wanting to see the cue ball because they saw it on Britain's Got Talent. But they, um, you know, you can't do it the way that you did in Britain's Got Talent. So there's been a lot of trial and error to get to the point that we are right, right now. And, and, and how we're doing it right now, how Ryland's doing it right now, I think is, is you know, it gets a great reaction. Um, now, one thing that I do want to point out is Ryland has a custom cube wall. Well, the cube wall itself is normal, but you'll notice that there's a metal frame around it, which takes apart in seconds the original cue balls that come from bon lee you put it on a table and it's it's freestanding on a table we had this stand made for the cue ball by guy barrett illusion design and the reason we had the stand made is because that way you don't need a table at the venue in order to set it up you can literally just set it up and put it to one side it makes it a lot um more impressive if that's the word it makes it a lot more it, it just gives it kind of an elevation if that makes sense and it allows him to push the cube wall forward pull it back to the back of the stage and then push it forward when he needs it anyway this is the performance of cube wall let's have a look at that and then we'll talk about what we think as you probably guess my favorite trick is to do with cubes <laughs> there's a lot of them we've got them in that mini that's only like like what a hundredth of what we got at home <laughs> but still, that's a lot of cubes. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a piece of art using the cubes. But first, I need someone to pick a card. Again. But what we've got, these are different cards. And as you can see, we've got the different emotions uh, that people feel when they watch magic. So as you can see, we've got Thrill. We've got, uh, we've got Crave. We've got um, Hope. We've got pride. We've got um, stuff like uh, don't know. We've got wonder. We got loads of different things, as you can see. I'll go through them, as you can see. Loads and loads of different ones. Okay. So um, you, what are you gonna do? Okay. Um, so what are you gonna do is you're just gonna touch any one of these cards. Touch one. That one right there. This one. Yeah, this is the card that you chose. So you can you can see what that says, can't you? You can say that. So when I'm up there, I'm gonna ask you near the end, and you're gonna shout it as loud as you can, okay? So I'm gonna show everyone else. That's what we've got. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. So that's what um that's one of the emotions that we've got. What we'll do, so I can't see the cards, is I'll uh, put the cards in the box, put the cards in the case, and I'll even shut the case. Now I can't get in at all. Now as I said, I'm going to try and create a piece of art using Rubik's Cubes. Right, let's go.
So, uh, in the original cue ball review, we gave it 100%. We said it was really good. We said it was super clever. I stand by that. It is super clever. It is super fun. The way that it works is absolutely genius. And the fact that you can adapt this to whatever you want to adapt it to is great. Uh, as you saw, Ryland. Now, one, two things that is worth pointing out. One of the ways that we actually reduced the amount of time it takes to do this is by not using the, the eight spaces, four at the top and four at the bottom. And instead of just that, just using six. 16 spaces that means there's less cubes to put into the cube wall which means that there's less moments where you're having to just do nothing other than put cubes in there um and and obviously Ryland's using the same force that you did on Britain's Got Talent because a lot of people um uh, are kind of you know d d d d well I wouldn't say that you know a lot of people don't know what the force is going to be but you know he's forcing uh an emotion and then the heart's there you know that's quite I wouldn't say iconic, but that's something that he's kind of known for doing. Um, but the music, the way that we found to make it work, at least from our point of view, is by adding music and kind of making, the, the, if you're interested, the music that we're using for that is a round table rival, uh, which is a great piece of music. It really is. It's used a lot in illusion shows, um, but the use of it in this is great because it kind of really elevates everything. And it kind of like gets the audience involved and it kind of adds a kind of even though what he's doing is just mixing up cubes and putting them into a wall. The fact that the music's going on, music really just makes everything 20 times better. And I've talked about this on the channel before, but musicality is so important and the use of music in a performance is so important. And that's one thing that you'll see with this particular routine. Um, it becomes far more interesting and far more engaging when you've got that music playing in the background. It's like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Well, you know, I don't really know what's going on. And then you've got that moment where you push the cue ball forward and you turn it around and you've got the heart there. It's like, oh my gosh. And it never fails to get, you know, a standing ovation every single time. So yeah, I mean, for, uh, from a review show revisited point of view, we gave it a great review. It still gets a great review. It's fantastic. It's one of the best props that I think has been bought out in the last few years. The only thing I'd say is you do need to consider how you're actually going to perform this. How are you going to do it? Are you going to do it to music? Are you going to do it silently? Are you going to have the cubes to one side? What are you going to do? And, and also bear in mind that this is not a close-up piece. This is something that you want to be doing on stage. It's great for kids' shows as well. It works really well for kids' shows. works really well for... Uh, uh, for family shows, works really well for corporate shows, but it's uh, it's a great trick, yeah, it's a really, really good trick. So uh, it, it continues to get a great review, you know, um, Bon Lee, I love Bon Lee, I think he's amazing, and this is just as good as anything that I've seen. So yeah, be aware of what it is that you need to do it for, think about the routine beforehand, don't buy it without having a routine in mind, Think about how you're actually going to perform this to eliminate the dead time, and I think you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so the final performance we're going to be looking at is The Thread of Life by Wayne Dobson and Alan Wong. Now, The Thread of Life is basically the gypsy thread. It's Wayne's handling of the gypsy thread, and uh, the handling is slightly different to any other handling of the gypsy thread I've seen. And... Um, the presentation is fantastic. One of the things that you're paying for in the thread of life is the presentation. Now, Ryland doesn't use the presentation that Wayne uses. It doesn't really fit. He tried it a couple of times at a couple of gigs, and it didn't really fit with him uh, and his performance style or him as a kid. So he went to uh, kind of think about music and what music he was going to use. But even, and you'll see this in the performance in a minute, he might not be using the same uh, patter as Wayne, but that's not to say that that patter isn't going to work for you. The presentation that you get with the thread of life is absolutely amazing. It really is. You know, it's something that Wayne used his entire career to make a reputation for himself, and it's a great presentation. It just doesn't work for for um, Ryland, unfortunately. Um, so he 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 did it to music, but there's an intro into the uh, to the presentation about hey. Uh, my mom hates it when I break things. So, well, you'll see. You'll see the performance uh, in a second. But also have a look at the technical side of things here because uh, when you get the thread of life, you get some fantastic handling tips from Axel Hecklau. You get some fantastic handling tips from Wayne Dobson. It's just a really great product. So let's have a look at the thread of life and let's have a look at a performance of Ryland performing it to music. My mom's got a problem with me and that problem is... She says, uh, I'm always breaking things around the house. Uh, well, one day my dad asked me, if I could have a superpower, what superpower would it be? And I said, 
oh, what, my mum was always saying, I'm breaking things around the house. So what if I could break things and put them back together? So I did this. Watch this. <laughs> There you go. That's the uh, that's the thread of life, and and you know if you've never done the gypsy thread before, I got to tell you the gypsy thread is a fantastic trick to perform on stage. It's one of those tricks, and I know this is a cliche, and we talk about this an awful lot, but it's true. It packs small and it plays big. It doesn't take up hardly any space at all. It's just a, a spool of thread, but you can have this routine play to the biggest audience. And, you know, you pick the right music or you pick the right presentation and it can bring the house down. It's as strong as any other torn and restored type of effect. It's as strong as a torn and restored card, a torn and restored newspaper, absolutely anything. It's it's as strong as anything. I've seen so many different versions of the Gypsy Thread. I've seen Gypsy Balloon. I've seen so many different ways of doing it. And I think that the Thread of Life is the best complete package I've seen. You get a ton of thread so that you can do it over and over again. You get some really well thought out hand handling tips, as I said, from Axel Hecklau and Wayne Dobson. You get a killer presentation that would work in almost anybody's act. It's just Ryland being 10 doesn't really work for him. But then you've got other presentational options that you can go with as well. Thread of Life is brilliant. If you want to learn the Gypsy Thread, and hopefully you can see from this performance that the Gypsy Thread is something that you absolutely should be learning, then this is uh, this is worth its weight in gold. So there you go. It's uh, the Thread of Life. We gave it a great review beforehand. It continues to get a great review. It's an awesome product. And honestly, if you don't do the Gypsy Thread, check it out because, and I've spoken about this on videos before, but there's a lot of close-up magicians that want to become stage magicians. And they ask me the question, how do I do it? Well, one of the ways of doing it is by taking something that doesn't take up hardly any space, learning it, and then being able to put it into your show. And this is something that you can take to a gig you can shove it in the back of your car or shove it in your close-up case. And if you get into a situation where you can offer them a 10 minutes floor show, you can do this and it'll get a really great reaction. So there you go. It's The Thread of Life by Alan Wong and Wayne Dobson. So there you go, guys. That's another review show revisited in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this. All you got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with another video. And don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can go check out The Net Tricks at www www.thenetrix.com that's www.thenetrix.com you can go check out the metrics and see what the fuss is about and see why everybody's joining and also while you're at it don't forget to check out my new online store www.magictv.org go check it out i'll be back again soon thank you so much for watching my name's craig from magic tv